So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these scrappy half square triangle table toppers. And these are really versatile because you can make them in different colors, you can even make them in different sizes, and they come together very quickly and seamlessly. Well, maybe not seamlessly. There's a lot of seams, but they come together quickly. Before we get started, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me today. So these table toppers are made up of half square triangles or HSTs as they're sometimes called. And we're gonna be making two at a time, which means you're actually gonna be making two table toppers at the exact same time. So it's a really fun, easy project. It's something that you can make quickly and it makes a wonderful gift. Because you have two, you could keep one, give one away, you could give them both away. Oh, you could just do all kinds of things with these. The finished measurement of this table topper is a 16 inch square. Uh, I am using four and a half inch half square triangles to make this, uh, but we're starting with five inch squares of fabric. So we are gonna be making, like I said, two at a time and uh, it's addicting. So let's get started uh, with our supply list. The fabric requirements for this project are as follows. For the half square triangles that make up the top, you'll need 16 five inch squares of dark scraps and 16 five inch squares of light scraps. For the batting, you'll need two 20 inch squares. And I use just a lightweight batting because I don't like it being too bulky when it's on a table, uh, but you can use whatever you'd like. The backing, you'll need two 21 inch squares and the binding, I was a little generous with this. I did two and a half inches by 152. And remember, this makes two of the table toppers. You will also need a good set of fabric scissors, a rotary cutter, pen or a pencil, the block lock ruler, which is optional because you can use a regular ruler too, if you prefer, an iron and an ironing board, sewing machine and matching thread. The supply list will also be listed below in the description of this video and the directions will also be on my blog. So check it out. So let's get started. So I have a huge stash of five inch squares. Uh, that's how I kind of do some, some scrap control, though it doesn't always work out that way, but I try to. So I'm gonna pull from these, but if you don't, you can always cut them uh, from your scraps and find just uh, 16 of lights and 16 of darks and you're going to be making two table toppers So it's really efficient if you have Christmas gifts to make. I went ahead and pulled my scraps So I have 16 of each. I have 16 lights and I have 16 darks and you can see I tried to have an array of different shades and colors and saturations um, and you know, between the greens and the reds and just to keep it all mixed up. Same thing with the off-whites. Uh, I try to keep them all within that off-white color family, but as you can see, some are darker and some are lighter. So next what I'm gonna do is match up my lights and darks. So I'm just gonna simply randomly place these right sides together and I'm gonna do that to all of them. So I have them all here and I have them right sides together and I have the light on top. Next, you're going to draw your lines. So a lot of people will just take the lights and mark them, but I like keep them together like this because it just gives it a little more stability. And for me, that just makes sense in my head. It really doesn't matter. You can do it any way you'd like. So you can draw a line down the center and to do that, you're just gonna line up the points on a line, any line will do. Lay your ruler on that line so it lines up on both sides and draw your line. And then you're gonna, you can sew on either side of it. That's what we're going to do now. So I'm just drawing a line, that centered point, and I would sew on both sides, a quarter of an inch on both sides. So um, just to make it easier for me and for you, I am going to mark those sew lines and it's gonna give me a little bit more accuracy. And I'm gonna do that to all sets. Okay, like that. And just keep going with all of them. Okay, once you have them all marked, you're gonna to go to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew on this line right here. That's a quarter of an inch from the center line. So uh, we are going to sew on this line. This is our center line here. 
and this is our quarter inch seam allowance and it's on either side so we are going to sew on this line and this line and then this is going to be our cut line so let me show you how i chain piece these together this is my uh my class machine uh, my regular machine is in the shop but the show must go on right so i am going to start sewing and i do tend to sew a little bit on the inside of that line because the lead is thick believe it or not that might make a little bit of a difference so i will sew on the inside of that line and i will show you how i chain them so when i come to the end of that side i'm going to grab another one and i'm going to line up this side so see how i'm nesting these off center a little bit and that way I'm not trying to do a point over a point and then lose my points so that's how I do it I'm just gonna do a couple to show you and then the next one And I'll just go through the whole stack like this. But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you a few. Okay. Then if I back this out, I can just, actually, no, I can't. I, know, I always think that I should be able to put it through the other way but I can't, I can't figure that out. So you do have to snip these in between and just start over. And do the other side. I'll fast forward this part for you. Okay, so I'm gonna take each stack. I'm going to press each one just to set those seams. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna lay my iron on them. Just like that. And I'm gonna do that to all 16 of these. So I'm just gonna show you as I finish up here why I do this. You can see how this is kind of bubbly and this isn't. This one's been pressed, this one has not. So just doing this helps everything relax and lay flatter, at least in my opinion. So as I finish these up, our next step is to cut them apart. All right, now these are all nice and flat and I'm going to cut them apart on that line. So you can do this one of two ways. You can just use scissors or you can use your rotary cutter. So you're just gonna cut along that line that you drew. And you're gonna do that to all of them. Now here's a little tip. You're going to separate these. That's what's gonna give you two different table toppers. So you're making two for the price of one, okay? So you're gonna make two separate piles of these as you cut them. All right, so you have two separate piles. We're gonna set one pile aside and I'm gonna show you what we do next with pressing. So, so now we have, this is all 16 of our pieces and we are going to press to the dark side. So to do that, I'm because this is a bias edge, which you've heard me talk about actually, let me get this one. This one you can see a little bit better. This is a bias edge, it's stretchy. We sewed on the bias, so we need to be very careful with that. So what I'm going to do is ever so gently push and just finger press it first. All right, we already set our seam, so we don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to press. I'm not gonna iron, I'm gonna press. I'm gonna put it right on top like this. I'm not gonna move it much. And I'm gonna do that to all of these to get your half square triangle. 
then we're going to trim them up. So do that to all of these. It takes a little time because you have to do it first with your hands, but it's going to be worth it because everything's going to be nice and straight and wonderful. Okay, these are all finished. Now we're going to go over and square them up using the, the block lock tool. So you can see I have these all pressed and ready to go. I'm ready to trim them up to size. I am going to use my block lock ruler. And this ruler is really cool because it has a ridge here. This is the four and a half inch one. They come in different sizes too, but this is a four and a half inch one. It works really well for this project. And what I'm gonna do is lock this right onto that seam like that and it just locks into place so it doesn't move it's really cool you can do this with a regular ruler and just mark it on um, the angle that you want but this just gives you a really good accurate cut so once you have it all lined up you're going to trim around the outside you can use a um, rotating mat which is what i have here or you can just move your mat like if you have a smaller mat you can move it as you go around it does help a little bit with the process pull away all your excess and you have a perfect half square triangle. So you're gonna do that to the rest of these as well. Okay, once you get them all done and pressed and trimmed up, you're ready to start laying out your block. So remember you have two of these. This is just one set. I did separate them into the two piles and kept them separate. And I used a clip to clip them together. So to lay this block out, and first of all, there's a ton of different layouts that you can use. But to lay it out, you're gonna simply start playing with the colors and the layout and everything. Until you like it. And because it is scrappy, it might take you a little bit longer to play with it and to really get a layout that you love. But uh, once you do, it's kind of fun because you're like, oh, wow, this is so cool. I really like that. Um, but again, I can flip things around if then something doesn't look right, but I do love the way this looks nice and scrappy. So with half square triangles, there's a lot of variations and it can be so much fun to play with. For example, if I simply turn these guys like this, I can get a star block and it's really cute too. You can just keep playing with it uh, that you can change around the colors. Like I don't particularly like all three of those reds together. This is kind of nice, you know, and you can just play with it and the layouts, I think there's like 16 different layouts that you can do with half square triangles. So they're a lot of fun. Uh, you can do um, even the flying geese type of thing or the arrows. Let's see if we did this move this down here you can see you can get some really cool effects on this mm. this goes this way so you can get some arrows and uh, you can just keep going on and on and on you can spend a lot of time playing with this so let's put it back to the way it was Okay, so let's talk about the construction of this block, okay? So this block is actually made up of four smaller blocks and I'm gonna show you those now. So if you look at this block here, this set of four, this four patch, with the half square triangles, you can see this layout, okay? And bear with me as we go through this here. And it is the exact same square here just turn so the screen one would come here here let me show you what i mean i 
and like that. So it's just the same block that's switched around to create this pattern. So that's how we're going to construct it. Okay, we are going to let me move these. We are going to make four units and it's going to be these four units. Okay, so if you are making this say with solid colors, uh, you want to keep that in mind because that would ease up some of your construction. You can do a um, assembly line construction with that. If uh, I'm of course with scrappy ones, this ones are right here. Let me turn that around uh, with scrappy quilts or scrappy patterns, you'd have to be a little bit more controlled with it. But uh, I just wanted to point that out to you that it is the exact same block. It's just turned. All right, so let's start sewing. And to do that, I am going to put these two together, these two together, sew, and then put these together. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to sew these two right now, and then I will be right back. So these two squares are sewn together with just a quarter inch seam allowance. They would go right here. And these two, same thing. They would go right here. Okay. So uh, now what I'm going to do is put these two together to make my block. So I'm just going to finger press these uh, to make sure that my seams are going in the right direction. And then I'm going to sew these two together. And then I want to show you exactly what I mean about the blocks. Okay. So your finished block will look like this. Okay. And like I said, it's the exact same block. It's just turned each time. So, so I'm going to sew all of these together. And then once I do that, I'm going to take each of these squares and put them together. So the top is finished uh, and all pressed and ready to be sandwiched and finished. So I do have a couple quilts that I made uh, and a couple tops here. Uh, so I've been making a lot of these uh, mostly for this video and also I thought it'd be great Christmas gifts. Uh, so this is one that is scrappy just like the one we had before. Uh, similar fabrics, uh, some are a little bit different, but you can see that I just did a crosshatch quilting design in this and um, I love the way it turned out. I did use beige thread and I kept it very simple so I um, used a beige background so you can't really see it on the back and I also bound it in a Christmas fabric that I had a scrap of. I also made one just using two colors. Now I will caution you with two colors. If your points aren't exactly on, it is going to show up like right here. My points aren't exactly perfect. Uh, it's going to show up a lot more than if it's a scrappy version, but it's still a really pretty quilt and that's just two different fabrics. And then I also made a Halloween one and I actually really love this one. This one I quilted with just, um, the serpentine stitch that's pre-programmed into my machine. So I did that and some cross hatching and I love how fun it is and how cute it is. And then finally I did do three colors. I don't like this one as much and I also made it a little bit smaller. Um, I don't know, I really love, love, love the scrappy version of this. But you can do, you know, so many different things with this pattern and uh, it's a lot of fun and it looks so pretty on the table. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing, giving me that thumbs up, and even leaving me a comment below. Also, if you have any questions about this tutorial, please let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. I'd love to see the finished projects, and um, I just can't wait to hear about what you make.